Here's what happens next. This is part two of an ongoing series about designing a moon car for NASA's future Artemis program. There isn't a finalized design for what the LTV is supposed to look like, so I've been going through NASA's research, and now I'm gonna take that research and start designing stuff. I like doing little thumbnail drawings like this to try to capture what I think the silhouette should be. The silhouette is physically the biggest thing you'll see. I wanna start by designing the really big idea and then design smaller and smaller things until I'm just tinkering with tiny details. As I've been doing that, there's two vehicles, and not necessarily inspiration for what it should look like, like, but sort of storytelling inspiration. One of them is a World War II US Army Jeep, which would be flat packed. The LTV is gonna get launched to the moon, so it has to be packed really efficiently inside the spaceship. Then the other is a Chevy Silverado with a utility bed. This is not a flashy vehicle. It's rugged, it's efficient. It's gonna get every job they can think of done for the next decade. A vehicle I did take design inspiration from was a mining shuttle car. These things drive through really narrow mine shafts. They just look like they don't necessarily need humans. And this is supposed to be an autonomous vehicle as well as a driven vehicle. Vehicle. Started playing around with this silhouette here where the driver's cab is sort of tacked onto the front of this big cargo bed. Also in one of NASA's press conferences, they mentioned that the vehicle needs to be able to pick up and set up cargo. So I added this big crane arm. From this drawing, I made a little Lego model, the Lego equivalent of a sketch. I didn't even build wheels on that side because I knew that the wheels on this side would look like that side. It's a sketch. It's not very polished at all, but it just let me get a 3D sense of the shapes and play around with that a bit. Then I used this Lego model as sort of a guide as I made a 3D model in Tinkercad. I like using Tinkercad to get a layout for large Lego builds because it's just giant shapes. Again, it's not too detailed. We're going from really big to medium details. I'll send these renderings to the design team. We'll be able to talk if there's any notes and if anything needs to be adjusted. And then once that's approved, I'll go into the next step, which will be to build a one-to-one -one digital Lego model. Stick around for that. That'll take more than one video, I'm sure.